Um, yes, well, I'm Chris Busby, but I, I'm going to talk in a, in a minute about, some, about Fukushima. But first of all, there's a very important um, aspect to nuclear power, which has been generally overlooked and is, and is absolutely critical for, for the general project. And you're going to hear about this from um, my friend Roland here. Yes, Roland from Malmbury. Um, well, I, I've been fighting nuclear f f uh, power and, and bombs since I was a teenager. So for 50 years I've been working with this problem. And yet two of the worst aspects I've only got to understand in the last two years. And only in the last half year I've understood what I think is the worst risk of nuclear power. And that is the connection to the sun cycle. We can get an electromagnetic pulse from the sun. We can call it an, an electromagnetic tsunami. And this will wipe out all connected major transformers in the world. Within. Solar flare, yeah? Uh, it, it's, it comes after, after a sunspot and after a solar flare and it hits the world so quick that it's hard to get any warning. It's, it's half a day, 8-15 hours it can come. So the warning time is very low if, if we, and we are not now prepared to take it, but if the world was prepared we could shut off some of the transformers in the world and they would not burn out uh, but that would mean that that there is a chaos which is inflicted by 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 political person or, or other persons who will get the blame for thousands of people dying and what, what's but, the problem but then? but the, yes the problem is that that uh, this um, it will uh, it will destroy transformers and if it's strong it will d destroy all microcircuits uh, which have been introduced since 1960 when we had a, a small solar storm which I remember because my gramophone went only half speed the woman singing sounded like a bass singer and and I was told it was the effect of the solar spots and and so I remember this thing so I had personally but this was a small one of the type you get three times per century but in the in the ice course you can see uh, because of the uh, nitrogen, a certain type of nitrogen reaction, that this uh, catastrophe gets very big once in a hundred or maximum 500 years. So in 1859, the only thing electrical we had in the world was telegraph system. And so the telegraph stations burned because of the the um, uh, induced electricity and as far as I can understand it also melted the, 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 the electric uh, cords which were in the air. Uh, they're safe from the, uh, if they're in some ways if they're underground and, and people were, uh, had to go to the hospital from electric shocks but that was everything that happened. Uh, people could read the newspaper in, in Cuba and and Hawaii in the midnight because they had what we call northern light or southern light, uh, aurora borealis, uh, all over the world. And, and this lasts for a few days. And, and now if we get the magnitude of 1859, it will destroy all microcircuits, all transformers. And this means that the cooling systems we have for our, our used fuel. Every third year you lift out the core, you're impatient, you want more energy quicker. So you lift it out but it will give energy so much that you have to cool it for up to 80 years. We're still cooling the kilowatts that Sweden used in the 1960s. We're still cooling them. With, uh, with new energy, wind, en wind energy and other things, yeah. And, and so in these dams they will surely be, be um, um, put out of order because they have microcircuits and they need a lot of electricity. The only way to, to save, save them from, from melting within a day and, and be, uh, becoming a, uh, a Chernobyl's and, and Fukushima's is, is to have the cooling 
made mechanically by wind power, maybe with flywheels, so you have the, for the wind three days. And if we, but if if this magnitude of 1859 comes, uh, it it is possible that that the reactors and the used fuel dams will will um, crash within a day, and and this means we will have around 4,000 Chernobyl Fukushima's in the same day in the world, and you can imagine how that will disturb for for, for centuries. And of course, it can explode like it did at Chelyabinsk. Yes, in in 1957 we had the first major atomic power accident. It was only one core that was lifted out, and it overheated. The, it the rods melted and went to the bottom, and there was a critical mass, and it threw the whole chemical uh, thing one kilometer up in the air, and then it fell down, and that whole landscape is cut off still this day, 50 years afterwards. You're not allowed to pass through it without special permission, and, and you have genetic damage on, 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 the, uh, on the vegetation, it's said there. So, uh, and so th this, this is really the worst aspect we can imagine of nuclear power, and it means that we actually should try to, to, to shut down all nuclear power as soon as we can, because every third year we are, we are adding an extra Chernobyl or Fukushima risk. I thought one year ago that Sweden had 10 possible Fukushima uh, Chernobyls because we have 10 reactors. And now I find out that there is around 80 lifted out cores. They, that means 5 million kilos of uranium and plutonium. 5 million. And the pollution of Hiroshima or uh, um, uh, Nagasaki was around maximum 20 kilos in Hiroshima of uranium, maximum 20 kilos of plutonium in, in, in uh, Nagasaki. And the, the people have not understood that unless there, there, there is, is this total atomic war, actually nuclear power is more dangerous than the atomic bombs, because the atomic bombs have so little radioactive material. In Fukushima, for every percentage that is leaked out, you have the pollution of 1,000 Hiroshima bombs. And it surely has been a few percent that have leaked out of these a few million kilos of plutonium and uranium that has, has been in the six, not only the six reactors, but in, in the maybe, uh, who knows, maybe 20 uh, uh, outlifted uh, her, hearth, do you call it? No, what do you call it? Uh, well, uh, the, 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 uh, the cores. The cores, cores. cores, yes. Mm. And, and we know also then in, in, in Fukushima that, that, that many of these rods have been, been thrown out with the explosion. The, the, the company and the, and the Liberal Democratic Party, whose election campaigns largely was paid by the atomic industry, have not told us uh, uh, the truth. They, 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 in Sweden, they, right? well, I mean, they, 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 they say, oh, the, the, the one core has melted a bit, sort of. But, but what about all these cores yes, that yes, were lifted no, we out? They went up in the air and they came pitter patter, pitter patter down. And then I've heard from people who've seen this uh, on the ground in Fukushima that they came. They haven't tried to to do anything. They've come with bulldozers and they pushed them all into the ground. So these and they they hope they get them one metal, yeah. meter down, but, but but they, some yeah. of it will still be turned up again when they go with yes, it. Yes, it's and and I guess that if a child finds this and holds it for one minute, they are dead. They're dead. Yes. Dear wise men, what can we do? So little time, so, that, that, so what, much to do. Yes, as I said. We have to stop nuclear power very quickly because every third year we ha get a new Fukushima uh, uh, Chernobyl risk from every reactor in the world. 
I think that if we can use and, and human rights legislation, we can stop this. Yeah. I think the time has come for us to use the, all of the but, very important legislation that has been put into position by the United Nations, which is all there, but nobody has ever used it. And I think mm. the time has come for us to use it, to actually go and say, look, all of these things are possible. All of the, these things are, could happen, and some of these things have happened. And so the time has come to stop it. And you people who've made all of these, these, these laws and these very wise sayings about human beings and how they should live together in harmony and how everybody has the right to live in an environment where they're safe and where nobody is threatening to kill them and where the pollution is such that their children are not going to die of cancer and all of these things. And they're all there written down and enshrined in statute. It's mm. about time they started to apply them to the real world. And I think we can do that. As far as, as we know, not one nuclear plant or um, cooling uh, waste uh, plant has counted with the electromagnetic pulse of the solar storms. Risk. So, so uh, and, and I mean, the problem is if you go to the, to the people of Napoli, Naples and under the Vesuvius and you tell them you are the next uh, Pompeii, they won't listen. And here we have actually built the volcano ourselves so that the nuclear yeah. uh, reactors will, will make the Pompeii of our whole civilization. Bec because even without nuclear power, this catastrophe is so bad that, that, that because uh, the, the National Science Association of, of America and the... the uh, um, you mean solar, NASA, solar flare, yeah? NASA... Uh, says that if we get a magnitude of 1859, which perhaps could be called the 200-year the maximum, uh, they count that hundreds of millions of people will thirst, hunger and freeze uh, or sweat to death. Hundreds of millions. Starve to death, yeah. And, and, and after, after one day, the big cities will... The only drinking water they will have is the turn of the toilet in polluted circumstances. That's the drinking water they have in the big cities. And people will flee out to the barnyards around and they probably kill the, the farmers and But anyway, eat the, the, what, the, what the, do we the, how how do we the, how do we of next year. what has to be done? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> what has to be done to the power station? Drinking yeah. our toilet water and killing each other. <laughs> I think we're, <laughs> nuclear is bad enough. Yes. Right? Well, well, how how do we do we disarm the nuclear power station or well, uh, uh, tell, tell uh, Roland, practicalities? Well, practically, Roland has got one answer. There are plenty of answers. You can have pump storage, so you could have hydroelectric storage. You could have um, uh, you could burn hydrogen. There are lots of ways you can you can you can create energy without electricity. I mean, you just have to think about it. That's all. Mm. You can do this. So if you decide on the, uh, I mean, we're very clever, the human race, so you can actually decide that this is the problem and then you can find a solution. There are lots and lots of ways. But it takes ways. time and we don't have it. So no, what is the fastest, well, what is the fastest way? It could, the, fa the fastest way would be, to ha would be to have pumped storage. I mean, you've only got to keep these things cool for long enough to bring all of these systems back online. Uh, or you could, you could separate the new, you could actually build new cooling systems Whereby, whereby you separated these cores in such a way that you could have a, a metal finned container with water in, rather like these copper canisters that they're, that they're going to bury under the ground, which conducts the heat away, and then rather like air cooling, mm. then the air can cool the cores with little fins and so on, and if the amount of nuclear material in there is small enough, then you then then you're okay. You, you know you have. But that would with, take long time of production well, to could, fix no, that. No, 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 really. If somebody had the decision to do it, if somebody thought, well, this is a problem, we've got to do something about it. It could be done in a few months. Now. You mean like, like a system like we have a cooler in a, in a car with where it spreads spreads yes, out. Yes, 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 yes. But, but you are talking copper canisters. canisters? 
What? You're talking copper canisters. No, I'm talking no, it's about before just air, air cooling. That's all. I mean, a Volkswagen car, for instance, you know, the old Volkswagen Beetle is air cooled. You just blow air over fins. A motorcycle is air cooled. You don't mm. have any cooling in a motorcycle. How, how do you get this force to blow it if we don't have you don't, electricity? You don't need to. You have fins. If you have fins, just what is what fin? they do, a fin is like a piece of metal. Thin metal sticking out like so that the surface connection yeah. with, with air is yeah. big enough. You increase a big ah. surface area, you see, and then that, mm. as it gets hot, it sucks the air up like this, and the air just normally goes through it. To, so it to has cool to be it. some kind of done. secure net. Yeah, yeah, like in a, the like air. A, like a yeah, sure, like a little like a little pond, a much smaller pond, you know, with made of metal, copper perhaps, you know, and then uh, lots and lots of metal f uh, fins, me metal kind of plates coming off it, okay. welded to it. And, and just in air, yeah, mm. sure. Without like, water. like you have in a computer, the, yeah. the core of a computer has got a lot of metal yeah, yeah. sticking like out like that. It's called a heat sink. But then that particular place would be very radioactive, yeah? Well, it wouldn't, it wouldn't no, be no it, more it, not before, it is, not, until, not until uh, the roads melt. No more radioactive. Well, if, 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 it gets, if it gets too hot. They? If no, 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 they won't. This, the idea is we're going to cool them, and we cool them with, these, with air cooling. They, they, you can, they, can, they can be almost 300 degrees centigrade without melting, yeah, so, sure. so, so it, you, you, you can, you you can, can cool, cool them yeah. me mechanically. So air contact. would be just enough? Yeah, sure. But we can... We can uh, uh, what do you think about it? Well, I, I, I would perhaps complete it with... Uh, supplement it with, with, with wind, wind power stored in, in big flywheels or something so that you have some fanning or, or circulation to, to, to make it more efficient. But, but uh, I, I think also that it, it could be... You have to separate them up, though. Spread, At the spread. moment, they're all, they're all together, you know, and so they, they've operated it in such a way that they... I mean, those ones at Fukushima, they put, they put, they put them on top of each other because they ran out of space. Five in one yeah, That's right, so they kept cramming them into the same thing, you see. I, I mean, and that's just asking for trouble. And, of course, they got trouble. That's what happened. So that boiled... They boiled dry, dry very, quickly, very, very and then quickly. they all melted, and, and there was a nuclear explosion, in my opinion. So let's suggest our watchers. Our, we, well, our, we have. That's it. That they start business doing these techniques with the <laughs> nuclear waste. Yeah. That's it, sure. Absolutely. And but urgently. Can, no, but you can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem. Okay. You can take a nuclear industry to to a problem, but you can't make them solve it, <laughs> especially when it's expensive. But I think I think also it really, how do we get this knowledge out? This and, is how. This and, is how. And, yeah, yeah. And, and and one yeah. thing is that, that we could uh, demand to get a, a description of this problem from our security atomic security I think that would be boards good. in the, in sure. the different we, countries because they should be the servants yeah. of the people, not only the servants of the industry which they've. Well, they can't. There, are, they, they are. there are all sorts of human rights laws that enable us to actually pull that particular piece of string and make mm -hmm. it happen. So and what is that book called that is so good? Yes, it's it's called uh, it's 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 called a woman. It's a woman called. It's called uh, uh, strategies for uh, environmental law or something like environmental law strategies. But uh, but I haven't got the actual title. I mean, we'll put we'll put the title into the video. Okay? Actually, so you buy this buy this book. Everybody should buy this book. It's a woman that I met in Salzburg at a at a big conference on nuclear law, and and this book tells you actually how to do it. So you you know you don't even have to be a lawyer. It's got like ways in which and people that you write to and who you write to and what you say. And, and even the text things, suggestions. You know? It's got everything. It's got everything. Yeah. So and I don't want to have to be the only person doing this stuff. All right. I want right. some of you people to buy this book and to apply yourself to the law inside this book and to pull these people off their pedestals because it's not difficult. And also some young people should consciously go into law studies with the aim of, of making good environmental laws. Also Linda Malone, that's the woman's name. She's Linda Malone. Is How do you spell Malone? M-A-L-O-N-E. Anyway, we'll stick it on the, on the, at the bottom. Under the video, in yeah. the info. Yeah, and Scott Pasternak. So it's Linda Malone, Linda A. Malone of the School of Law of Dorothy, uh, School of Law of, uh, uh, blah, 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 in Virginia, it's Virginia, it's Virginia Law School. United States, in, yeah? In the United States. And she's great, this woman, she's great. And so this, this is environmental strategies for, for um, saving the planet legally, and it can be done. It's a fantastic book, absolutely fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks and so cheap. much. Thanks so much, <laughs> so, That was chapter one, uh, uh, chapter 